We have other videos showing these experiments in more detail. So if you want to do these experiments or just learn more, then you should watch them. <laughs> kids, it's time to get serious. Remember kids, you should always have adult supervision and permission while doing these experiments. So let's dive right in. We'll use that, right? <laughs> Awesome! Not popping. Not popping. This is a magic balloon. Okay, I guess it's not a magic balloon. The pressure is less with more tax. Today we are going to make some bottle rockets. Pour some vinegar into your bottle. Now take the baking soda and put it in your little bowl. Leave a little opening in the foil. Put on your safety glasses and go outside. Okay. <gasps> this is Newton's third law of motion in action. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own launcher. Put some baking soda while the valve is closed. Shake it up and then open the valve. And <laughs> Today we're going to make balloon rockets. Next, put the string through the straw. Rushes out the back. The balloon reacts by moving forward. <laughs> Today we have a Boba Fett launch lap. Now I'm going to launch Boba Fett without his jetpack. Wow, look how high that went! It can launch to 50 feet in the air. That's really high. This difference in air pressure creates lift. <laughs> For this experiment, we're going to make a magnet. To make this work, I'm going to rub my magnet across the safety pin about 50 times so that it becomes magnetic. Only rub it in one direction. Let's try it out now and see if it's a magnet. Awesome. Moving electrons make magnets, and moving magnets make electrons move. I'm going to make an electromagnet. The first step is to wrap the insulated copper wire around the steel rod. Now connect the battery to the ends of the copper coil. Now the steel rod is an electromagnet. Isn't that cool that it can pick up another bolt? Whee! This is a fun ride, Mr. Magnet! For this experiment, we're going to make an electric motor. Put your copper coil ends through the safety pins. Let's see if it works. Whee! It works. For this experiment, you'll need a AA battery and a stack of button magnets and some bare copper wire. Bend it until you have sort of a heart shape. This part will touch the positive pole and this part will touch the magnets. That's awesome! You'll need aluminum foil, a battery, three button magnets on top, and on the other side, a big magnet. Close up one in like this. <laughs> this is another homopolar motor. <laughs> <laughs> For 
are going to make a battery roller. You will need a AAA battery and three small button magnets on each side. Bah! If you turn it, then it'll go in the other direction. This is a type of homopolar motor. Wow! Look at it go! We really did it! Now slip your aluminum foil into your cardboard tube. And now put your AAA battery with three button magnets on each end inside. Hey look! We built a car! We're going to make a magnet powered train. You will need a AAA battery and three small button magnets on each side. Ta-da! The electricity from the battery flows into the copper coil, making it an electromagnet. A DC motor has copper coils and a magnet in it. And when we send electrical signals, it can cause vibrations in the DC motor. We can try to transfer these vibrations to a cup to see if we can hear the sound. I'm going to hold it up to the mic so you can hear it. First we're going to set up our fruit by putting it on the wooden stick. Next you have to tie up your fruit. See how these grapes are standing still? Fruit is diamagnetic, which means it generally doesn't have any unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic materials have a weak repulsion to strong magnetic fields. We're going to make a solenoid from an electromagnet so you can see how it works. Wrap the copper wire around the test tube. The magnetic field from the electromagnet is attracting the permanent magnet. This is how a solenoid works. It can also repel. Look how we're making the magnet float. Today we are going to make a flashlight that uses electromagnetic induction. Every time I shake this tube, the magnet moves through the copper coil and makes electricity. Every time I shake this tube, it lights up the LED. This is a very strong magnet and this copper is not ferromagnetic. See how it doesn't stick? I'm going to hold these two pipes and drop the magnets at the exact same time and we'll see which one lands first. One. See how the magnet moves slowly down the copper pipe? This is because of eddy currents. Look, it falls so slowly I can drop it and catch it with the same hand. Magnets are not attracted to the aluminum, like they are to iron or steel, but if you drop a magnet through a roll of aluminum foil, it will hover down slowly, just like it did through the copper pipe. That took a while to get down. This roll of foil weighs 2.6 pounds, and it's really heavy, and I'm going to move it without even touching it. Do you see it moving? If you drag it all the way, you can feel it resisting the motion. It's really cool. Let's see what happens when we swing it over the roll of aluminum foil. The eddy current induces a wobble on the pendulum. See how the eddy current resists the magnet and causes the pendulum to stop swinging quickly? With an even stronger magnet, it stops the movement very quickly. If we suspend magnetite in a liquid, then it becomes a ferrofluid. It is called magnetite because it is attracted to a magnetic field. Add more oil and then you have a smooth black liquid. You see those spikes? That's the magnetite lining up with the magnetic field. A compass will help you find your way if you're lost, and we're going to build one. First, you take a needle and rub a magnet on it 50 times. Okay, that was 50. The end you magnetize will point towards north. Even if I twist the ball, the magnet will still point north. A dynamo is a machine that can turn movement into electricity. This electric motor is turning the motion of my hands into electricity. If you buy a dynamo kit like this one, you can build a dynamo with a handle. Wow, it works! You can't see me!
but now you can see the light. I'm going to show you how to extract magnetite from beach sand. Let's rub our magnet in the sand. Magnetite is a mineral or a type of rock that's found in the earth. Magnetite is known as magnetite because it is attracted to a magnet. After just a few minutes at the beach, I had all this magnetite. Wow, it's making spikes by lining up with the magnetic field. You see how as you tap this ruler, it falls? But if we put the newspaper on top of the ruler and tap it, the ruler at the same strength, it barely moves. The reason the newspaper acts so heavy is because there's a lot of air pushing down on the newspaper, keeping it in place. We're going to make a pH indicator out of red cabbage. When your liquid is cooled, strain out your cabbage. A neutral solution should remain purple. An acidic solution will turn pink or red. An alkaline solution will turn blue, green, or maybe even yellow. An acidic solution will turn pink or red. An alkaline solution will turn blue or green or maybe even yellow. Salt lowers the melting point of ice, causing it to melt faster. Now this is why they place salt on icy roads. Pressure in a liquid increases with depth. So that's why there's more pressure at the bottom of the ocean than at the surface. The Fresnel lens focuses light on the back of the Stirling motor. This light turns into heat which spins the motor. And just like that, we've turned sunlight into motion. The first step is to put some hydrogen peroxide in the bottle. Add your yeast quickly to to the jar and then close it up quickly. Yeast has an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Now the bottle wants to float because it's full of oxygen. If you put it in some dish liquid, you'll blow some bubbles. That's cool. That's crazy. I'm a bubble farmer. It, they're like grapes on a grapevine. Oxygen bubbles on the vine. For this experiment, you'll need a potato. You'll also need some hydrogen peroxide. Potatoes also have an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Today, we're going to demonstrate how much your lungs can hold. Tip your two liter bottle really fast, then you just blow in. <gasps> the capacity of my lungs is about half of this bottle, which is about one liter. <sighs> we have this geyser tube made by Spangler Science. I'm sure you've seen those videos when you add Mentos to Diet Coke. Today we're going to use that reaction to launch marshmallows. This works because of nucleation. Today we're going to prove Newton's first law of motion. I have a bucket of water here and I'm going to swing it around without spilling any. All the water is still in the bucket. Sound is caused by vibration in the air. And that's what causes these salt particles to dance. So now you put a teeny bit of soap on your 
finger. Spread it out on your finger and now put it in and you have a magic finger. This blue is the water, these pennies is the black pepper, and this white table is the air. The soap molecules assemble at the air-water interface. Which causes the black pepper to spread out. Now we have our paper clip suspended between the two cans. Let's use static electricity to ring this bell. You take your bolt and put it on the dropper. Do you see how it's just barely floating? That's perfect. When you squeeze it, then the water doesn't have anywhere else to go. So it goes up into the dropper and, it, and then it fills up the dropper and makes it heavier and it sinks to the bottom. Wow, this is really cool. So you'll need two balloons and some long hair like Grace. We're going to rub rub her hair with these balloons. Your hair is sticking up like Albert Einstein. Now that the hairs are all positively charged, they don't want to stick to each other. Rub the balloon in your hair again and move it next to the paper. Wow, look how it's jumping! The balloon is negatively charged and the paper is positively charged. That's why the paper jumps to the balloon. For my next experiment, we're going to move the soda can without touching it. Rub the balloon in your hair again. Look how fast it's rolling. The balloon is negatively charged and the can is positively charged. That's why it follows the balloon across the table. For the next experiment, tie the two balloons together with some thread. See how the balloons are tied together? They're touching each other now. Now rub both balloons in your hair. See how the balloons are repelling each other now? That's because they are both negatively charged. For the next experiment, hang this plastic loop somewhere high. Now rub the plastic bag and the balloon in your hair. You see how I'm making the loop move? So they're both negatively charged. You have to do that slow. Next, go to your bathroom sink with the charged balloon. Whoa, it's going toward the balloon. See how the stream of water is attracted to the balloon? Water molecules have a positive part. The water molecule can turn so that the positive part is attracted to the balloon. We have a Jedi Force Levitator. You can use electric charges to move objects in midair. Wow, Ray is doing a force pull. Okay. Wow, isn't it amazing that this rod is making these shapes open up and float? Now let's see if we can use the force to make a sandstorm. Do you see how the positive charges on the rod make the sand particles jump? Today we're going to build a Van de Graaff generator. A Van de Graaff generator makes static electricity. Now let's see if it works. It does! Grace is holding on to the can, and she's standing on a plastic box. Wow, look at Grace's hair stick up. Wow, that's amazing. Look at all these lightning bolts coming out of my fingertip. That's like I have a lightning superpower. When you put a compact fluorescent light bulb next to the generator, it lights up. That's because the electric field from the generator excites the gas in the light bulb and causes it to flash. Today I'm going to show you how to make electricity using ice or heat. A Peltier device is a thermoelectric device. Aha! Do you see the ice is causing it to move? The heat flow from 
from my hand to the eyes is creating electricity. What? See how fast it spins when I put hot water on this side and an ice on that side. Today we have this. This robot kit uses solar power. And when you take it in the shade, it stops. This is called a radiometer. It's amazing that it's converting sunlight into motion. When the radiometer is in the sun, the particles on the black side get hot and start to knock into the vein. The veins spin because there's higher pressure on the dark side, which pushes the vein around. I'm going to stand on these eggs. See how they're not breaking? I'm literally walking on eggshells. This is an excellent experiment. Wow, none of the eggs broke. That's incredible. The reason the eggs don't break when I step on them is because of its shape. The shape helps spread the weight from my foot over the rest of the eggshell. For this experiment, all you'll need are some eggs. Challenge your friends to hold an egg like this and press as hard as they can. <coughs> Even if I press with all my might, the egg doesn't break. If you press the eggs this way, then they will break. <laughs> We're gonna make an egg float. Eggs don't normally float, they normally sink. So how can we make this egg float in water? When we dissolve salt in the water, it becomes heavier without taking up more space. That means the water becomes more dense. Wow, it floats now! We changed the density of the water, so now the egg is less dense than the water and the egg floats. For this next experiment, we're going to measure the temperatures of different colors so that you know which color the dress in different seasons. The black gets to 66 Celsius, and the white only gets to 48 Celsius. In the summer, you should wear white clothes, and in the winter, you should wear dark clothes. Visualize a laser. Kids, never ever stare at the sun, or never ever look directly at a laser. You will need a laser pointer and an aerosol or spray can. The light from the laser reflects off the aerosol droplets, and you can see it. Oh wow, when I spray the mist, it makes a rainbow. See how easy it is to make a rainbow? When the sunlight passes through the water droplets, it separates into the different colors of the rainbow. What's inside this box will help us to make a rainbow? It's a glass prism. Wow, the prism is splitting the white light into all the colors of the rainbow. Wow, look, it's a half rainbow. Hey look, we can see the colors of the rainbow because the water bottle is refracting the light. Now we're going to turn off the light and shine the laser pointer through the rod. This bouncing back and forth is called total internal reflection. This is how fiber optics that bring the internet to your house works. Let's see if we can make the light travel around corners. The light is bouncing back and forth and going around the corner and coming out the other side. Oh wow, it works! The light travels around the corner and comes out the other side of the rod. As long as the angle is not too much. We'll use light to pop balloons! <laughs> A Fremen lens causes light rays to bend, and you can use it to focus all these light rays on one point. When all the light rays focus on one point, the light energy turns to heat. We can use it to pop all these balloons. This next experiment is called a peering coin. This coin is in the bowl and you can't see it. But when we pour water in the bowl, prepare to be amazed. But when there's water, it bends the light so that we can see the coin. <gasps> this experiment is called the switching arrow. Which way is the arrow pointing? Are you sure? Whoa! So what makes the arrow switch? The bottle is in the middle. 
The water in the bottle bends the light. Look, I have two left hands. This next experiment is called streaming light. So point the laser through the hole in the bottle. Do you see how the light is following through the stream of water? And I'm catching the light with my hands. That's awesome. Total internal reflection also works in a stream of water. A photoresistor conducts electricity when light is shining on it. It's like a gate that opens with light. We built a circuit with the battery, with the motor, and with the photoresistor. When I, when I shine on the photoresistor, the light allows the electrons to flow from the battery to the, to the motor and then turns the reel. Today we're going to make a periscope using this box. Have an adult cut two slits in your box at a 45 degree angle. Now have an adult cut an opening at the top of one side and cut another one at the opposite side on the bottom. Once you have the viewers cut, you can insert your mirrors facing each other. Oh wow, this really works. This is awesome. Today, we're gonna make our own lamp. Whoa, it looks like it's glowing. With the flashlight alone, it only shines the light in one spot. If we put it in a water bottle, it'll scatter the light. For this experiment, you'll need a bottle of tonic water. See how it glows? The tonic water has something called quining. The quinine takes up a high energy light and emits low energy light that you can see. This is called fluorescence. We're going to make a t-shirt that color changes in the light. Do you see this pigment is white? When we put it in bright light, it turns to blue. First, we're going to take some fabric paint and put it in our bowl. Now I'm going to put the photochromic pigment in the paint. Wow, look how fast it changes color. Now use your pigmented polish to paint the mug. I have some warm water here and let's see what happens when we pour it into the green cup. Wow, look how it's really changing color. See the battery turned green? Now I'm going to empty the hot water and put in the cold water. Wow, look how the battery is changing back to red. This experiment teaches us about air pressures and temperatures. On the left, it's cooler in the morning. On the right, it's the afternoon when it's warmer. See how the basketball bounces higher in the afternoon? As the air particles move faster, they hit the inside walls of the basketball with more force. That increases the pressure of the ball and bounces higher. We also put a balloon in the freezer and in the sun. After taking it out of the freezer, the balloon was 24 inches. After putting it in the sun, the balloon grew over an inch. When the air particles get hot, they push against the walls of the balloon with greater force, and the balloon grows. This is a plasma ball. Wow, this is like lightning in a bottle. The states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas, but plasma is the fourth state of matter. The streamers flow toward your fingers because electrons like to flow through you to the ground. Let's see what happens if we move a fluorescent light bulb next to the plasma ball. Wow, can you see how this light bulb lights up? For today's experiment, we're going to try to eat a lemon. Yuck, it's really sour. Now I'm going to take a miraculan tablet and then take a bite. Now that it's dissolved, I'm going to try to eat the lemon. Mm. That's how you can eat a lemon. Today we're going to make fake snow with a polymer gel. Now we have a cap full of Insta Snow. This is amazing! Look how fast it grows! The polymer swells when the water gets into the spaces. That's why the snow grows. Today we're going to make bubbles and learn how soap works. So how are bubbles formed? Soap molecules look kind of like this spoon. If we get up real close, 
You'll see the water sandwiched between the soap. The heads like water and the tails don't. Do you see how the oil floats on top of the water because it doesn't want to mix? Let's see what happens if you add some soap to the oil and water. Remember our soap molecule? The long tail likes oil and the head likes water. Do you see how it mixes together now and doesn't separate? Bubbles burst when enough water evaporates and breaks the film. So to make giant bubbles, we need something to prevent the water from evaporating. Do you see how the big bubble can split and change shape? Not all bubbles can do that. That's because the starch chain makes the bubble film stronger. We're going to build a battery. And we're going to use it to power this clock. We're going to stick one copper and one zinc in each side of the lemon. Wow, look, it's working. Just with a lemon. I just moved half of the clock, and now we have a watermelon lemon clock. Let's try to make a salt water clock. And it works. Look, it's working out of salt water. That's awesome. Today we're going to build a water wheel. I finished stapling the cups to this side, so now we're going to staple it to this side. When we pour the water, it turns the wheel and changes the potential energy into motion. A sterling motor runs on heat and turns this heat into motion. I have a cup of hot water here. Wow, look, this is so awesome. In electroplating, you can coat one conductive material with a metal. Place your pencil lead in the copper sulfate with the alligator clips attached to it and wait a few minutes. Wow, do you see how copper metal is forming on one electrode and bubbles are forming on the other? See how one pencil lead is coated in copper and the other one isn't? We're also going to find out how many balloons it'll take to float a little boy like me. Let's see if these balloons can lift this dinosaur. This dinosaur weighs exactly 9.2 grams. It takes exactly three balloons to barely lift him in the air. Each balloon lifts about three grams. It would take 148 balloons to lift one pound. To figure out how many balloons to lift you, multiply your weight in pounds by 148. This is a light microscope. A microscope is a tool that scientists use to make little things look like big things. I'll try to make a slide that, so that I can show you onion cells. This is the onion slide I prepared. Magnified 400 times, you can clearly see the cell walls. Today we have gallium. It's a metal that melts in your hand. See how it's melting with my body heat? It's 75 degrees in this room, and we're going to need some extra heat to melt it all the way. Wow, look at our metal Lego man. We're going to rock and roll with the rock tumbler. These are what the rocks look like after tumbling for five days. See how smooth and shiny they got? This rubbing is called erosion. Erosion happens naturally in rivers and oceans. As you see, we can use a similar process to make nice shiny jewelry from gemstones and rocks we find in the earth. Today we're going to learn about solar eclipses. And we're going to learn how to make a pinhole viewer. Sometimes the moon passes between the sun and the earth. Do you see the shadow on the earth? It almost completely blocks out the sun. That's a solar eclipse. Now we understand the eclipse, let's make our pinhole viewer. To use this viewer, you have to put your back to the sun. The light from the sun will go through your pinhole and make a picture on the white paper. Oh wow, look, it really works. There's the sun inside of my pinhole viewer. Now we're going to learn about how plants and flowers drink. Add a few drops of food coloring. It has been two days and our plant started to change. You can really see the yellow at the edge of the flower. Do you see some red on this petal? We're going to try the experiment again with celery stalks. Can you see how the celery is red now? The yellow 
didn't change much. Do you see all the blue specks in the leaves? You can really see the blue at the top of the stalk. Capillary action happened. We have a resurrection plant. This is an ancient evergreen plant that will spring back to life in less than a day. To bring your resurrection plant back to life, just add water. This is an example of how plants can adapt to really harsh environments. Today we have a plant in a bottle. I planted this eight months ago. The only thing you need is light. You water the plant before you seal up the bottle. The bottle is a tiny ecosystem. Everything that the plant needs is in the bottle. Thanks for watching JoJo Science Show. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to my channel so you can see all my fun videos. And hit the bell. Bing! So you'll receive notifications on your device whenever I post a new fun video. And remember, remember kids, kids, science, science is fun. fun. And remember, kids, kids science, science is fun. She said wine is fun. <laughs> <laughs> science is fun.